Hi there. Welcome to Psalms of the Savior. I'm Hunter Measures. Today we're going to be looking at Psalm 127, verse 1. Now, I've titled this devotion, God the Greatest Architect. And so we're going to read the text, and you're welcome to follow along in your own Bible with me. So it reads, Unless the Lord builds the house, those who build it labor in vain. Unless the Lord watches over the city, the watchman stays awake in vain. So there's this idea that unless God is the focal point uh, or the prompter of an event, it doesn't matter. It's either going to be fruitless, it'll be torn down, or it'll even just be stopped before it starts. So I'm going to talk about three different kinds of buildings that man can choose to build. The first type of building is from Genesis 11, and it's the Tower of Babel. In this story, the men who were uh, building the tower, they were trying to build it up to heaven to build a great name for themselves. But this was all for their own glory and for their own selfish gain. Uh, man's glory doesn't last. Only God's glory lasts. So God, he, he puts a stop to their plans, and we fast forward to the next plan for a building. And we're going to spend a bit more time on this one because this is what Psalm 127 relates to. Yeah, so Psalm 127 deals with the building of the temple from the perspective of Solomon. In the past, it was David, Solomon's father, who wished to build the temple, but God informed David that his son shall be the one who builds the temple. So David's intentions, they were obviously noble, and they came from a place of love for God. But God simply had a triumphantly better and perfect plan that was worthy of following. Sometimes the dreams that we have, as good and noble as they may seem, aren't necessarily God's dream. And this brings us to the final kind of building. And this is the building where we submit to God's will and construct what He deems as perfect at that time. So the theme of building presented in Psalm 127 verse 1 is similar to the theme found in 2 Samuel 7 verse 10. And it says, And I will appoint a place for my people, Israel, and will plant them, so that they may dwell in their own place, and be disturbed no more. And violent men shall inflict them no more as formerly. So God's plan is so much greater and far more refined than David's. And even David knows this. So God shows us that he does want some kind of temple, as David said he would build. But why does he turn David down and say that his son will do it? What were his motivations behind this? Well, one reason is to show a parallel between Solomon and Jesus. Well, how so? Well, they are both kings of peace, and God wanted his temple to be built by a peaceful ruler. Isaiah 9.6 calls Jesus the Prince of Peace. And, and secondly, they both accomplish the will of their father by making a temple for God's people to dwell in, or to worship in. Both of the temples that Jesus and Solomon build allow people to have easier access to God. Although Jesus' temple is even better. The difference is that through Jesus, we are God's temple and we are God's dwelling place. The tearing of the temple veil symbolizes how God's presence is not being contained and it is for all to enjoy if they so choose to. What a thing to celebrate, that the veil was torn so that a more intimate way of worship and relationship could be possible. But this was God's plan all along. When you break it down and you look at the blueprints of building the temple from God's point of view and not man's, you see how intricately perfect it was designed. Uh, far better than what man could ever do with such nearsightedness. So, if we can see how awesome of an architect God is, how much more should we trust him to build our life and submit to his will rather than trying to do all these things ourselves. Even if we think we are doing a good thing, God knows best. Ask him what he wants to build and how he wants to build it. So here are some questions for reflection. Number one, do you have any plans that are not bad per se, but aren't God's will? Number two, how can you turn them over to him? Number three, what's something God is wanting you to build? And Number four, as God's temple, are you maintaining your body in a physically healthy way, spiritually healthy way, and mentally healthy way? And with that, let's pray. 
So Heavenly Father, thank you that you are the great architect, that you have these perfect plans and you had a plan right from the beginning for our salvation and for our redemption, Lord. And you have a plan for each and every one of us as well, God. I ask that um, if, if we don't know our calling, Lord, I ask that you would reveal our calling, whether we are ministering to people in the church or we're ministering to people out uh, in the secular world, Lord, would you reveal our calling? And would you reveal what sort of building you want us to build for you, as long as it aligns with your will? So Holy Spirit, would you empower us to do all these things? And Lord, may you be blessed and glorified through them. In Jesus' name, amen.